everybody, Lucas Henneman here, and welcome to this week's episode of Guitar Tone Tuesday, which is all about an issue that I think is extremely important and doesn't get talked about enough. Hand health. If you're a guitar player, and if you're an active guitar player who's playing often, playing for hours a day, your hands truly are the most important thing. It's even more important than what guitar you're playing. But the guitar that you're playing does make a difference, and we'll talk about that a little bit. So, to me as a player, I think a lot about my hands, and I listen to my body a lot. Now, I'm not going to blame this on the fact that I have a visual impairment, the fact that I don't see very well, but I think the fact that I don't see very well maybe makes me hyper aware of it, because I am feeling my body a lot, you know, when I'm playing the guitar. I'm feeling how things uh, function in terms of uh, what I have to do to make a certain sound happen, what I have to do with my wrist, what I have to do with my fingers to make that sound, to get that sound from the instrument. So the biggest thing as a starting point to me is straight angles. And what I mean by that is that as much as possible, I am not bending my wrists. I am keeping them as straight as possible. This is a really important thing, and I, and I notice this a lot with people's left hands. A lot of people, for some reason, when they start playing the guitar, especially bar chords, they want to do this with their wrists, kind of reach from underneath and bend the wrist very heavily here. That is one of the things that can cause carpal tunnel syndrome and other issues. So having as straight as possible a wrist uh, and a very straight angle here from your shoulder down to your elbow. Your elbow should be pretty close to your rib cage, generally, and your hand should be behind the neck, ideally with your thumb uh, in the most comfortable place wherever it needs to be, in my opinion. Now, lots of people say your thumb has to be always behind the neck. Um, for me, that would be very difficult because I have pretty large hands. So my thumb is often kind of peeping over the top here, and that's just a technique that I've learned. But the nice thing about that technique is it does keep my wrist very straight, and it makes it so I'm never cocking it down like this. In terms of the right hand, it's really about keeping your shoulder relaxed, keeping your elbow here in the most comfortable place, not too far up, not too far down, just right there in the middle, keeping your shoulder relaxed so that your shoulder can kind of be back as much as possible. And therefore, it puts your, your right hand, or your picking hand, depending on which hand that is for you, if you play left-handed, uh, it puts your, your picking hand in the most ideal position to be able to employ a number of different techniques. And in terms of your right hand, if you're playing finger style, the idea is just to have your wrist as straight as possible so that you can either float your hand above the strings to get sustain, or if you want to bring it down, you're actually bringing your whole arm as well as your wrist down to mute. And your palm just goes right there next to the bridge to get that muting effect. And you can play around with that location depending on what sound you want. They're all a little bit different. Another big thing, going back to the left hand for a second, is not pressing too hard on the fretboard of your guitar. <laughs> a lot of people have what we call the death grip, which is where they just squeeze the heck out of the neck of the guitar. This is not good. It's not good for your frets. It's definitely not good for your hand. You always want to make sure that your left hand is as light as possible on the fretboard. And this is something that I'm always learning. Um, and I feel like, you know, I'm going to be developing my technique with this until the day I die. I'm always going for the optimum sound with the least amount of effort. So a good exercise is just to take your left hand, place it on top of a chord shape. In this case, I've got my fingers on top of an F chord shape. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to press down as much. I'm just going to keep pressing until I get that sound. 
If I press too hard, the note's going to go sharp. But if I just place my finger on the string, very lightly, think of your fingers almost like feathers floating in the air. Your fingertips are just on those strings. You get a great sound with the least amount of effort. And this helps your wrist. This helps your fingers. This helps your whole body feel better. OK. So these are some very important things. Now, in terms of your right hand attack, that's something I'm always working on. And I do know that I have a pretty strong right hand, which I'm always reminding myself to lighten up on. Um, <laughs> that's, my, that's my reminder to myself all the time, is always just to lighten up. But um, yeah, you know, when you're playing an electric guitar, you can let the amplifier do the, the job for you to a degree. But you also want to play with passion, right? So it's that fine line of playing hard, but not too hard, and playing soft for sure whenever is required, and being able to play soft, but with intensity and with emotion. So that's very important as well. I want to talk about guitars for a second. And I'm holding this guitar for a specific reason. This is my Melanson Custom Artist Telecaster, which was made by Gerard Melanson, the late, great Gerard Melanson, right before he passed away in 2019. So I'm very lucky to own this guitar. It's, it's one of my favorites, one of my number ones, so to speak. I'd say it's my number two. Um, it's a wonderful, wonderful instrument. Now, when I had this guitar made, I was hemming and hawing over specs, and I asked Gerard to make me a very deep neck with what he called a 59 Les Paul profile, uh, which meant that the, the neck, when it arrived, had very substantial shoulders on it. So the wood at the back was very, uh, very, very, like there was not very much wood missing, I guess I would say, <laughs> from the shoulders of the neck. Instantly, I could feel that my hand and my wrist were not happy. And this is what I'm talking about. When, when, when we talk about listening to your body, right? You got to really listen to your body. I could feel that it wasn't comfortable, but I loved everything else about the guitar. So honestly, when that guitar, like I lived with it for a little while, but when that guitar was four months old or so, I took it to Patrick Hawley, who's a luthier around here, who's built me a, a couple guitars. And I sat with him while he shaved down the shoulders of this neck. We kept the depth because I liked the big neck, but I didn't get along with those shoulders. And I, you know, this was an amazing experience. If you're ever going to get a neck shaved down, talk to the luthier and see if you can sit with them while they do it. Maybe pay them a little bit extra to do that. Because the result is that you get the neck that really does feel right for your hands. So Pat shaved this neck handed it to me. I felt it for a while. I said, no, take a little bit more off. Shaved it, handed it to me. I said, no, no, take a little bit more off. And I, basically what we did was we really narrowed down these shoulders a lot. So it's more of a C-shaped neck now. And this guitar has the most comfortable neck now out of any of my guitars. I can play this guitar, this guitar for hours. It's still a very substantial neck. It's nice and full in the hand, but it's full in the right ways for my hand, OK? So you can't fall in love with a guitar and say, oh, the neck, oh, the neck hurts my hand, but I love the guitar. You know, if the neck hurts your hand, you have to move on to a different guitar or make the investment in getting the neck reshaped for your hand. This is extremely important. As I say, I love, love, love playing this guitar now. It just feels fantastic. So that's something that I recommend. And I've sent back guitars to people before that had the wrong shaped neck. I've had them reshaped and sometimes not shaped to the right shape for my hand. And I've learned that lesson the hard way. So this time around, I think I did the right thing. And I certainly recommend that to you if, if it's something that you can consider. Um, the other thing is, if you have the luxury of owning a few different guitars, especially if you're a gigging musician, you should try to have one guitar that is your guitar that you pick up when your hands are not feeling ideal, but you have to play a gig. To me, this guitar is that for me. This is a parlor-sized acoustic guitar. Um, so if I have an acoustic gig and I've been playing as I often have to for you know eight hours a day or so, I'll pick up this guitar and take it to the gig. Uh, last weekend, for instance, I had a gig in the afternoon, and then I had a gig in the evening, and I was the only guitar player, uh, the only instrumentalist on both gigs. 
And so my hand was feeling fatigued, so I brought this thing out to the second gig, and it saved my hands. Why did it save my hands? Well, it's got a shorter scale length. It has a nice, fairly shallow neck, not too huge. It just fits my hand very well. And because of the lower string tension, it's also easier on my right hand. And, you know, it has the advantage of sounding really good, really big for its size. This is a Peggy White pre, uh, parlor guitar. Uh, Peggy White makes great guitars, and I've got a, a couple of them now. I almost feel like playing the guitar is pointless because it doesn't really mean anything to you, but the, the most important thing to, to, to you is to say that, you know, uh, getting a, a, a guitar that really does ease the tension on your hands is a good idea. Finding the strings that can ease the tension on your hands once in a while can be a good idea too. Um, the other thing about this guitar that's really great in terms of just being good for your body is that it's not a huge guitar. It's not a huge dreadnought. It's very comfortable to sit with. So if I'm playing an acoustic gig where I have to sit, this is often one of the guitars that I'm going to bring out because it's so small, because it's so easy on my body. Now, I'm just going to play it anyways because I know Guitar Tone Tuesday is all about that, but uh, yeah, uh, just a little bit of bluesy stuff before we go. Fun stuff. So I want you guys to let me know, did you find this episode helpful in any way, shape, or form? And let me know what other kind of technique type material you guys would like to dive into in future episodes of the show. It's nice to do these kind of looser episodes where I'm just talking more about something that's very important um, to us as guitar players, because that was my initial intent with this show, and it kind of became more about gear, <laughs> as things often do. And I love talking about gear as well. But it's nice to talk about health and uh, taking care of our bodies as players. So let me know about your journey when it comes to taking care of your hands as a player and uh, what you've done. Uh, please do share in the comment section down below because I think it's important to start some dialogue about this stuff here on this channel. Thank you so much for watching, everybody, and we will see you on the next episode of the show. Take it easy. Bye-bye.